Now let us learn about the single most powerful tool that Moodle offers for adaptive learning and that is the lesson activity. In this lecture I will show how the lesson activity looks when fully functional and in the next lesson I will show you how to create a lesson and all the tips, tricks and pitfalls associated with the lesson activity. The lesson activity is extremely powerful because it enables you as a teacher to deliver content and practice activities in a fully adaptive path. On the screen now I have logged in as a test user on my test installation and I have a lesson activity that is created here. Notice this icon Moodle uses for lesson activity shows you multiple paths. Now before I enter the lesson let me show the learning path for this lesson. This lesson is for a case study on software project management. It will start from this main page where the case study will be explained and then there are four learning concepts for the student to accomplish one by one and they are detailed here the project schedule stakeholders quality issues and budget after each concept is learned a question will be asked by the system to check if the student has really understood the concept or not now here comes the adaptive path if the student answers correctly then they can go automatically along this path to the next concept if they do not answer correctly then it means that they have not understood this concept completely and then they will be given remedial learning content that is this primer page you can see there are primers for all of this after they finish the primer they will once again go back to the question and only when they answer it correctly can they move on to the next concept and so the learners have to progress over the four concepts successful and only then they will get to the end of the lesson. Any time that they do not get the question right, it means that they have not understood the concept. They will be led to a different path where they will get extra remedial content and they have to finish it, go back to the question and that will repeat. This example of multiple learning paths is only how I have designed it. And you can build your own complete learning paths with adaptive behavior and branches however you want to design your own pedagogy. You have complete freedom as I will show you. So I have started and this is the main page that I had shown you. So a case study is explained here and I have a button here that I have created inside this lesson to go to the next step. I also have a progress bar given to me and Apart from that, the only way for me to traverse inside the lesson is through these buttons. Okay. So once the student goes through this, I have to click on this next button. So this is my first concept project schedule. I have this L1, L2 I have given here for your understanding. Just keep a note of this L1, L2s, etc. Level 1, level 2. It will make more sense in the next lesson. I have just added it for your benefit. Now this is the first concept project schedule and there is a write up here which the student has to read through understand once understood they will click on the next button again again these next buttons are to be designed by you as I will show in the next lesson so click next you can also notice that the progress is updating itself from page to page now after the concept now we have come to the question the first concept was given and following that I have a question ignore the choices that I have actually given they don't make any sense but in this example this is the correct answer to the question how would you revise the project schedule I would scrap everything and start again so the way that I have set it up this is the correct answer and if I choose this correctly I will be able to I have shown that I have understood the concept and I can go to the next part of the lesson if I choose something else, then it shows that I have not understood the concept. Moodle will take remedial action and show me different content. But first, let me show you the correct path. So this is the correct answer and I will submit it. I have a response given by the LMS. That's the correct answer. This was the question asked. This was my answer and that's the correct answer and I can continue. So because I gave the correct answer now I have moved on to the next concept that is stakeholders progress bar is also updating itself 
and once I read through and understood this, I have to go to next. Now see, I have just used a plain simple text here, but you are free to use any kind of uh, media here. You might add a video, you might add uh, some URLs, you might add a YouTube video, audio, anything is allowed here. Okay, so then when I click next, because I have finished this concept, next will again take me to another question which will test my knowledge on this. So again, there is a question that will test my knowledge. How will you get all the stakeholders on the same page now that you have taken up this project? Again, there are four choices here. Now you know how this works. If I give correct answer, only then I can go to the next concept and progress. If I give the wrong answer, then I will be given remedial text. Now, for the sake of this example, what I will do is I will give a wrong answer. This is the correct answer. How will you get all stakeholders on the same page now that you have taken up this project? The correct answer is to do another kickoff meeting, right? But what I will do is I will give a wrong answer just to show you recalculate budgets and submit. This was the question. This was my answer. That's the wrong answer. Now you will see the adaptive learning path. When I click continue, I will be shown a primer text that will explain in depth into what I did wrong. This is a primer. Again, notice this for your sake, I have added this. So there is some additional content here that explains in greater detail what I did wrong, why I should not have chosen what I did, what is the correct answer, all that I can give here. And you can still see that progress is happening. And when I click next, I should click next only when I have understood this correctly. Because when I click next, I will go back again to the same question. Notice one thing that Moodle is very intelligently changing these options. It's randomly giving positions. The, the choices are the same, but the positions they appear is randomized so that I cannot just randomly click something again. It will again go wrong. The correct answer to this, how will you get all the stakeholders on the same page? Again, the correct answer is this, do another kickoff meeting. Now, if I give this correctly, I can proceed further. If I give a wrong answer once again, what should happen? I will go back to the primer page. That's the wrong answer. Go back to the primer page and I have to read, I have to understand this correctly. I have to come back. And until I solve the answer correctly, there is no escape for me. So this time I will click the correct answer and submit. Your answer, do another kickoff meeting. That's the correct answer. Okay, so I have demonstrated now that I understood the second concept. So I will say continue. This time when I say continue, I will go to the third concept. Again, L1 means that it's a concept level. So this is the third concept that I'm getting quality issues, including NFRs. Let me quickly pull up that uh, map again to show you how we have progressed. Quality issues. So I have finished this. I went to a question. I got it correctly. Then I went here. I did this. I did this question two times wrong. Third time I did it correctly. So then again, I have progressed to quality issues. Now, next two examples I will do correctly and show you. Okay, so this is the concept. I have to read, understand it. And when I am done, I will click on next. Again, I get a question to test my knowledge. What tool will you introduce for issue management? For issue management, I will use a bug tracking tool such as Bugzilla. This is the correct answer. And that's the correct answer. So I should be able to proceed to the last concept. That's the correct answer. I have now progressed to the final concept that I had to learn budget and change requests. There is a question. I have to answer this correctly. I will give the correct answer. That's the correct answer. If I did not give the correct answer again, even in the last concept, I would still go to another primer page. Everything is finished now. Now, if I click on continue, I should go to my end of lesson. This is the end of lesson in the map. I answered the question correctly and I came to end of lesson. You have completed 71% of the lesson. Why is this showing this? This is showing this because uh, this primer and this primer and this primer I did not have to take because I answered correctly. Even though I went to the end of lesson, it's showing 71%, not 100% of the lesson. Whether you want to use this progress bar or not is your option because sometimes it will not show correctly. We have reached the end of lesson. 
I will click on end of lesson. This will show progress details for me. Now, congratulations, end of re lesson reached. Fantastic, good achievement for me. Your score is four out of four. Where is this coming from? This is coming from that four questions I had to pass on my way here. I got all four correctly. That's the only way I could progress. In some cases, you can design such that even though some questions are wrong, they can still get to the end of path. In that case, you will not need 100% result to get out of the lesson. In my lesson, in my design, I had to get everything perfectly correct to come out of this. That was the lesson activity in action that you have seen just now. In this lesson, you have seen how powerful a tool lesson activity can be for adaptive learning. In the next video, I will show you how to build a lesson activity from scratch. In this lesson, we will create a lesson activity from scratch, exactly the same that you saw in uh, action in the previous lecture, we will replicate now. Even though lesson activity is so powerful, it is probably the most underused activity in Moodle. There are a few reasons for this. Mostly because the lesson creation interface is difficult to understand. In this lesson, I will show you how to easily beat this problem and many more tips. When creating lesson, you have to keep four aspects in mind. That is the learning content, the learning path for the student, the assessment and the linkings that will go with it. Because of this, always start by putting the learning plan on paper. I will pull it up again on the screen as shown now and see the strategy that I have used to create this plan. Notice that I have used these labels L0, L1, L2 and so on only for better understanding of the learning paths. L0 is the main page where the lesson will start. L1 is the different concepts that the student has to go through. L2, another level is basically the assessments, the questions that are in place. L3 is the different remedial content that is only shown when the students cannot get the question right. And L4 is for the end of lesson. Now I will return back to my site, turn editing on and then create a new lesson. This is the lesson creation page. I will start by giving the lesson a name and a description. I always like to inform my students that there are tests inside the activity just so that they take it more seriously. That's why I have written it in the description of the lesson and I will also turn on the display on the course page. Now there are several sections full of options for us. I will show the most important ones and you should experiment with the others that I have not shown in detail. Open the appearance section. You can choose whether to show a progress bar. But like I showed in the previous lesson, if you have adaptive learning and content that will only be shown in certain conditions, then this progress bar will not reflect accurately. So in this case, I will not turn it on now. The menu will add a separate extra menu for the lesson in the navigation block. Again, because I have conditional content, it will not make much sense for me and I will leave it to default off. Availability allows you to set the date limits within which this lesson is available. This is exactly the same as for other activity like quiz. It's not required for me. One special extra control is the time limit that you have got here. You can set a time limit within which the lesson should be finished once it has been started. A countdown timer will be displayed in the lesson. In my situation, it is not required. Expand these options and you can see that you can set a password for this lesson also. If you turn this on, you can set a custom password here and share this password with the students that you want to take the lesson. Others will not be able to take up the lesson. I find these extra options useful only when my focus is on assessment aspects of the lesson. But here I am using it as a learning content. So I will not use these additional features for now. In the next section on flow control, I will keep everything at the default. Next is related to the gradebook. 
lessons by default will make an automatic entry into gradebook and you can configure special options here the one that is of special interest is this practice lesson if you make it as a practice lesson then the default behavior is overridden and this lesson will make no entry into the gradebook you can also control the number of times the lessons can be attempted by the student I will make my lesson unlimited by setting it to yes. I will be going into activity completion and other conditional activities in upcoming lessons in this same section. So for now, you can leave everything else on default. And as a final step, click on save and return to course button. Okay. Now back on the course page, you can see here that our new lesson has been added. Now at this point in time, just the lesson shell has been created it does not have anything else inside it no content no assessments no learning paths have been created yet i will show how to add all of that in the next lecture in the previous lesson we got so far as to create an empty lesson shell in this lecture we will build out the whole lesson with content questions and custom learning paths the main page for lesson creation is asking us what would you like to do first and there are links here to import questions add a cluster of questions add a content page and add a question page going by my design i will first need to add a content page where i can put up the case study description this is the l0 page it should have a single link to another content page that will contain the first learning concept project schedule return back and accordingly click add a content page i have the page title and the page content ready and i will paste it in remember i am using these labels l0 l1 and so on so that it is easy for you to see how the structure will build out it is definitely not necessary for you when you build your lessons on this page next you will see five sections content one content two and so on what are these for to add extra content to the page no and this is exactly where most people trip up first while creating lessons these five sections that are here are for creating links to other pages for this current page i want a single link available that will go to the first concept page i will just name it next for now here there is a drop down called a jump and it is there to specify where this link will connect to or jump to now i have not yet built out the first concept page so how do i link there see the options in this drop down this page next page previous page and so on two very important points for you to note right now first point when you build any further pages they will automatically appear in this drop down so you will have to build the next page and then return back to this page to link properly the second point building these links will require you to revisit your pages more than once so take it for granted that you will not complete the page in your first iteration with that part of the mystery solved i have already typed next here in the description and retain the jump to this page this will just be a placeholder for me what you write in this description here will appear on the top of a button in the bottom of the page that you are building and it will be used for navigation nothing else for me to change i just wanted one link so this is the only one i had to edit finally click on save page and return back to the main page a list is being built out here now with all the content that we will build and the first entry has been made now let's quickly look at the plan again we finished building this intro page and the next step is another content page that i will use to store a concept that my students will have to learn on the topic of project schedule also notice that all the concept pages will have a prefix label of l1 and this page will have a single link going out to a question page so i have to build this link also keep this in mind now returning back from this actions drop down i will add another content page 
I hope that you are already familiar with this page now. I will paste in the title and the description. Now for this link button, I will just call it next. And once again, I have nowhere to link ahead to. I will just retain this page as a temporary placeholder. But the good thing is, now that I have built this page, I can go back to the previous page and link it here correctly. And that is exactly what we will do. First save the page, then return back to our first page. Scroll down, expand the jump drop down. Magically, our newly added pages appear here now. I will choose the second page, L1 concept project schedule. You can see how the labels are helping now. It's a great help if you are building lessons with hundreds of content pages. And then save the page, return back to the listing. Notice that the jumps column in the first page has updated correctly. Now, another important point for you to remember. The ordering in this listing is important. This is because on the jumps drop down, there will be an entry called a next page and previous page and so on. And that next and previous will refer to the ordering on this listing. It will become more obvious to you when we are building more pages. Next on the agenda is to build the first question page. That is this one. And it should have two links or rather two types of links. One for the correct answer, another for the wrong answer. Return back. And from the actions drop down, choose question. First you will have to select the question type and everything else will depend on this choice of question type. Currently there are uh, six choices and uh, it should be ample. I will go with multi-choice. The interface for adding a question is exactly similar to adding a quiz question. So first I will paste in a title. This page contents is actually the question text. There are a max of five answer choices that are available and you can use how much you want. Now remember that if the score has a positive number, then Moodle will take that answer as the correct answer for this question. For wrong answers, you can either specify zero or even negative numbers if you want negative mark scoring. Throughout this lesson, I will give one mark for correct answer and a zero for wrong answers. So let me fill these answers in. I will not give anything for response. This is the response that the Moodle will give back to the student based on the choice that they are making. I will leave it empty because there are default responses that Moodle can be made to use. So I will go with that. I will fill in the answers now. This is the correct answer. So I will give this one as the score. I have filled in all the answer choices. Now comes the most important and in interesting aspect of lesson module. Notice that you can give different jump links to each one of the answers. There is a jump choice here, jump choice here and so on. And this is exactly where adaptive behavior is coming in. I will keep it simple. If the answer is correct, then the student can move to the next concept page and if the answer is wrong then they will go to the primer remedial content page where they will read upon some basic information that should help them to answer correctly but of course at this point none of our pages to link forward have been built so i will leave all the links as they are by default and on a placeholder and save and return back to the listing page quickly go back to the plan Next on the agenda for me is to build this primer page and the next concept page that will have information on stakeholders. In exactly the same fashion that we have seen so far, I will build these two pages and to save time, I will edit this lesson to skip to after building. So let me build those pages now. Okay, I'm back. Now these two more pages have been built and at this point of time I can go ahead and update all the links that I have so far. Now I will update these links and edit the video. Okay, I'm back and I have updated all the links now. So let me quickly recap from the first main page. There is a single link and that will go to the first concept. 
and this is the first concept from the first concept there is a single link that only goes to the question after seeing the concept the question is taken up in the question there are four links each link is connected with one of the answer choices all of the three wrong choices will take me to the primer where extra learning content is available adaptive path and there is one correct answer that correct answer if the student takes they will jump to the next concept in line that is stakeholders the wrong choices will lead to the primer in the primer there is a single link again after reading the primer there is a single link that, and that will take them directly to the question again and they have to answer the question again this is the second concept page i have not yet updated this link that's where we are now so by now you will have understood the process very well also you now have an idea of how you can use the questions and the linking to adapt learning content and dynamically change learning paths for different students this is a remarkably powerful feature for you to have in the interest of time i will jump this video now to show you how this lesson will look when fully built out okay on the screen now you can see this lesson has been fully built out all the pages questions learning paths and the links are completely in place and this is how it will look when you are fully done there are a couple of more points that i did not mention earlier firstly you cannot have more than one question in the same page in quiz style for the question page take a minute to guess the reason why The reason is that because questions in lesson module are designed to allow you to jump. Don't use the question feature here in lesson to build a quiz-like behavior. It is just not the tool for that. If you want multiple questions, use this add a cluster link. That will allow multiple questions, but each question will have its own separate page. I will now end this lecture with a summary of some best practices for lesson activity that you should keep in mind. The first one is that always start by putting the plan on paper or some design tool before starting in Moodle. I had done this and I am going to attach this with this lecture so you can download and have a look. You should do this before you start creating the lesson in Moodle. The second point, your plan should have a definite path from start to end of the lesson. While creating components of your lesson, you will not have the links up front. We saw that throughout this lesson. Don't worry. Take it for granted that you will have to iterate more than once. First to build the content and second to fit the links in. The fourth and last point. Put the exit page in place up front as early as possible. This is a good anchor point for you to have in place. You can do this by linking to the end of lesson in the jump drop down. 